Yeah, I struggled just some more time, but finally we we done. So I like to explain the what we we've done still. So yeah, Dr. Oh, so um, thanks for having us back again. And uh, what basically what we did was we we took this uh, the second valve was the evolute the regular evolute R. Uh, noteworthy, the Evolute R passed the bifurcation very easily. Uh, so in retrospect, uh, that's important that even a, one French makes a difference. We placed it um, um, uh, at, the, at the expired depth from uh, between four and five. Uh, and the previous valve moved up a little bit, so we didn't push down, much rather moved up. And uh, the result of the, of the, of the second valve was actually very good. I'm not. Can you see it? Yeah, we do see it. We yeah. See it so there. Nicely. So there's no. There's. This is good. Patient is stable. Uh, noteworthy. The coronary perfusion is still there. The patient has didn't have any EKG changes, and um, you can see where the where the uh, valve is, where the leaflets are. And to be honest, I, I said, and I, I promised that I would like to access the coronaries because obviously there was right. a challenge or is a challenge. Um, then the patient was getting a little bit antsy and uh, we, uh, we tried on the, on the first, what I tried to do is actually go between the two valves. So underneath the first one and higher up on the second one into the, between the, uh, the trough, get in and we used a, we only did two attempts because the patient got antsy and uh, moved around and it was a little bit long procedure. But I'm confident that between the two, um, he will be able uh, in a second session to access the, uh, the valve. As you said, and if you heard Greg, the question was pulling the previous valve up. First of all, the valve did move up by itself a little bit, so it left a space between the, the wrap of the, of the first and the, uh, and the leaflets. So the leaflets, as you can see here, they, they, they move in our favor. And I was, uh, you know, we were able to, to get into the, into the space. You can see the sinus is narrow, um, but there's no obstruction and there's good flow yeah. both on the right and on the left side. You can see on the right side, the right coronary looks good, well perfused. The left side uh, looks perfused too. The EKG looks good. And uh, even though we wanted to show you the axis, obviously that was the challenging question um, due to the fact that contrast, time, life and everything. Um, so for the axis, um, um, you know, we, or Dr. Arne uh, just ex uh, decided to stop the procedure before we were able to, to get the axis. But I can promise you between the two, we were able to get through the struts and get in between the trough of the leaflet. So I'm, I'm hope, hopeful and confident, actually, that we're able to, to get access to the, uh, to the leaflet, uh, to the coronaries, I'm sorry. So great. Eberhard, this was a, a very challenging case, so congratulations to both of you. Uh, and, and clearly there's perfusion. This patient had very severe aortic stenosis, is obviously much improved now. We always try to look back in retrospect and say, what Correct. might we have done different? And you know, there's such a fine line between not wanting to go too deep and increasing the likelihood of heart block versus being a little high and then you can get embolization. So how do you think this might have been avoided? Would yeah. you have done anything different? Yeah, um, always good. Th this is always good. And, and you know, today's, today's situation, I think it's fair to, to actually say that and do that exactly what you said. And that's what we did. So what could, could have done, you know, what, if, what, what, what added to the slip probably was the wire and the propofol um, because the, the pro is a little bit more slippery due to the wrap and the, the propofol on top of it, plus the wire and the nose cone. If you remember, the nose cone leaned towards that particular um, side and it doesn't take much to pull the valve up because yeah. he placed it a little bit higher. So having said that, maybe it would have been better to have left it where we were before at the uh, five, six, seven depth knowing what we know now. Um, the second thing is whether we really did need the pro. Um, that's questionable. And looking at how easy and how smooth the R went through, um, I would have probably in retrospect said maybe we could have taken the, the Evolute R uh, without avoiding both the slip and the, and, the, um, and the problem there at the bifurcation. So yes, we would have done things differently. 
if, uh, if we had known what happened during the pro case. Um, so that's, that's always good to reflect that even, you know, in a difficult access situation, you might actually sacrifice uh, or you, you actually even one or two French difference um, makes, makes a difference at the access. And, and I, I, I confirmed him and I supported him in using the pro, even though it might not have been necessary. Well, that's great. Any, any last comments from? Yes, it's a great, great job. But the, you know, the, this is a two stand was a, that is a, personally, I'd like to prescribe the, the anticoagulation in this patient. Uh, may I ask about the use of the anticoagulation in this patient? It's a younger age and a little bit the low, low risk of the breathing. I don't know what the, what the, what the, what the uh, philosophy here is, uh, Dr. Hong, but I think, I don't think we do anything special, yeah. right? You yeah, put him right. This patient already have a stent, so he have, she have to have the depth. So the plus one warfarin or new oral anticoagulant may increase the breathing risk. So, but yes, we needed to further define the how to prescribe the anticoagulation in such a patient. But I don't think, I mean, a valve and valve situation in the future might be something yeah. that we have to address uh, by a different form of um, post-implant uh, anticoagulation therapy. But I don't think we still have supportive data to yeah. change anything, even though it might be possible in the future. Yeah, I would agree with that. Most of them have still been treated with DAPT. I mean, you can raise a real question. Maybe every TAVR should be treated for three to six months with oral anticoagulation, but that's a <laughs> that's different story. Um, yeah, but that's probably what's going to happen, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, so as, as you can see here, um, I don't know whether you guys, I don't know which, which image you can see, but um, uh, the second one was fairly, was fairly stable, uh, also the, the, the depth. And here you can see the depth is in the range of, what, four or five, and it's sealed very nicely. So it was uh, unexpectedly challenging, to be honest. We didn't expect that. And we don't want to say, well, this is what life is, but sometimes it is what life is. Okay. And uh, we, you know, for you guys uh, sitting there, uh, would have been, uh, there's always better to sit there than standing here. But um, I hope we got the case done um, yeah. for the patient okay. And with the coronary access, I'm confident because we were through, but you need a little bit of patience to get the wire in and all that. And we didn't want to do this now. Um, patient being a little bit, now we, you know, we, we sedated uh, mice uh, more, and that's why we just decided to stop. So, so Eberhard, right now the EKG looks good. How long yeah. will you keep the pacer in? How long will you observe the patient? Just, uh, just one day enough. Okay, 24 the, hours. Yes. EKG so. didn't change. There was no yeah. block. There was no delay. Right. We have the same policy, actually. You know, if there's no uh, rhythm concern or if there's no changes in terms of delay or, or bundle blends block or something like that we just keep it in until the next day and then take it out yeah for the top and three usually we pulled out the temporary pacemaker if there is no the conduction of normality on yeah. the table but uh, self-expandable device we keep the one day after right. procedure yeah all right. Well, we want to thank you uh, for okay. working through this uh, difficult issue. Over. And uh, you got a great result. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good. Greg. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, this is uh, our second part of uh, a live case demonstration. Asam Medical Center first part. Uh, is uh, we sh we're gonna show us our the routine table practice and the second part is our routine the left main the PCI practice. Uh, I'm gonna very happy and uh, with moderate and uh, discussion and the uh, PR is uh, uh, Excel trial Graxton and the syntax trial Patrick Soray and also great surgeon David Tiger and. Uh, and the uh, pioneer of a lot of stent trial, Adrian Kashrati, and the bifurcation expert, Maurice and John Omnistron, and David Kanjari. Uh, this is very happy to share I, 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 the, our live case demonstration for landman intervention. Okay, I'm gonna to introduce our team, and uh, he's uh, my fellow and senior fellow, Hanvi Pa, and uh, our assistant uh, the technician. Okay, we're gonna start our case the presentation. Thank so, you. Dr. Park. I will introduce our case. A 63 years old male was admitted for FHS pain. 
he had a history of hyponatremia, and he spread me test revealed positive at stage three. We, we check chloroangiogram. Chloroangiogram shows significant abdomen bifurcate disease. Next, his current inspector is hyperdipedemia, and his clinical presentation is tape angina. Next, his echocardiograph normal LVC function, and his treatment test showed positive at stage three. Uh, left chloroangiogram shows significant stress at this abdomen and proximal stalk. We check FFR, FFR is 0 0.76, and we check FFR proximal to LAD, FFR is point is 0 0.80, and the right coronary angiogram show no lesion, and syntax, his syntax score is 12 points. So, and the, I think, uh, could you show us the previous uh, slide? Okay, I think, uh, uh, I think this patient is a typical patient, a relatively young patient, the 63 years male, presented with the stable angina, treadmill test shows the deep, uh, definitely positive at stage three, and the just hypertension. Looking at the, uh, this is area coral view, you can see the, uh, the disease was combined distal and main disease, and the overall syntax right coronary was normal. Overall syntax score just 12 is a low uh, the group of syntax score. I think this patient was, uh, there are a lot of debate which uh, treatment strategy is the best for such a distal and main relatively young patient, and the, what is the best strategy. Any, any you know, comment, uh, discussion to a panel for such patient? So, so I'd like to ask David Taggart. We have a, a very outspoken cardiac surgeon on our panel who uh, worked with us on Excel and many other trials. David, do you have any problem with us doing PCI on this lesion? Um, in this case, absolutely not. I think PCI is a good strategy. And the reason I say that is in this particular patient with an FFR of 0 0.8 to the LED, you would be worried about the use of a mammary artery in the risk of competitive flow. Mm -hmm. So I think in this patient, a strategy um, um, of PCI is very reasonable. I, I hope we're recording this section, okay? <laughs> because I may want to use this again. Which just goes to show, Greg, I do believe in data. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Greg, I'd just like to point out, you know, you look at the left main and it may not look that severe. But if you look at the size of the left main compared to the proximal right. LED yeah. and circumflex, it's diffusely diseased. Diffusely mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's a great call. point, Gary. That's why it's so important to evaluate these with, with intravascular ultrasound. So, right. and uh, we already checked the intravascular ultrasound. So, before intervention, we're going to show the, our baseline, the intravascular ultrasound. We checked the IVUs from SOC to left main. We're going to also check the uh, this uh, uh, proxy LED to remain. Could you show the suck? Yeah. This is the, the okay. part of the suck and the proximal suck is the vessel size uh, 4.0. This is uh, the uh, stenotic portion and the, there are huge plug and uh, this is the distal main and uh, in the red main there is uh, the, the huge yeah, plug burden more than 70 percent and uh, atherosclerotic burden was uh, nearly extended to the uh, uh, main osteums, uh, so we're going to cover the whole region. Okay, could you show us the, from the uh, prox LED to the left main? Okay. okay. Okay, this is the yeah, prox LED, perfect. and the vessel size is also 4.0, and uh, there is uh, no disease, and this is uh, the sucker coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So literally, added osteum is okay, but the disease was uh, just involved in the distal limb main, and we should uh, uh, definitely cover the uh, added osteum. Okay, this is the distal limb main. I mean, so, just, yeah. so just a couple of quick comments. It's remarkable that the proximal LED and the circumflex are essentially normal, yeah. but you also see that the left main disease extends into the LED osteum mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. circumflex osteum, mm -hmm. um, which is typical of bifurcation disease. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So this is an interesting case. I mean, I, I, I would call this Medina 101. Uh, yes, I don't yes, think there's yes. much in the LED. So I'd be very interested to hear how the panel would, uh, would treat this, uh, one stent versus two stents, and if one stent stenting into the circumflex and provisional in the LED. Mm -hmm. So SJ, maybe, and Marie-Claude, Adnan. Okay, uh, all right, so my IAPS findings is uh, pretty clear. So, so I, I got two options. Even the, uh, you know, anatomically is not so tight in the LED side, however, uh, we have to consider two stands from the beginning, 
um, terms of uh, if the plank is not so much, actually, I believe a really, you know, a long-term stand outcome should be good. So, two stand would be good. And second one, I'd like to uh, consider kind of, a, you know, stand from the circumflex to the left main and kind of a cool load without, you know, a ready uh, uh, stand. Just uh, stand, uh, stand cro crossover from the circumflex to the main and kissing balloon inflation for LED and then we're going to see what happens. There is something, right? So start with one stent, provisional, right, right. and then mm -hmm. into the circumflex. Marie, Claude, do you agree? Uh, yeah, I completely agree. As you say, this is a one, uh, zero one, so uh, uh, I would give a chance to single stent, uh, left main uh, from the ostium. Uh, we saw the disease up, go up to the ostium and uh, going to the circ, which is a very big vessel, large territory too, uh, very large territory. And then, uh, and then put the second stand in the LED on mm -hmm. if needed, meaning mm -hmm. FFR positive or large mm -hmm. section. So you would do one stand provisional, yes. though, and perhaps consider imaging or FFR mm -hmm. into the LED. Is there anyone who's very nervous about jailing the LED and feels that you mm -hmm. must do a two stand approach in this mm -hmm. case? Anybody? One of the approach, because uh, Japanese uh, this year available, um, probably <laughs> debarking plus one stand strategy, that would be another option. I mean, but Greg, honestly, there's not much data on jailing the LED. Right. Very little. I mean, so that's, yeah. you know, personally, I'm a little nervous, um, but that's just me. The other thing, you know, we don't see this kind of left main disease in the U.S., where it's focal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the distal vessels are essentially not involved and there's very little calcium. I mean, uh, this has to be something different from what we typically see in the West. No, I, I, I agree. We see this every year at TCTAP. I remember doing two cases like this for you uh, in, at this course, just yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. I never yeah, see yeah. this uh, in, in the yeah. United States. No, but Greg, to, to, be, uh, to clarify, the idea is not to trail the lady. Uh, after uh, uh, the stent and pot, we would... Uh, uh, do a mini kissing uh, with mm -hmm. the nose mm -hmm. to open uh, to to give access to the LED for the future. Now, is there the, the LED is a large vessel? Is there mm -hmm. uh, any particular stent that people would like to use so we can maximize the opening into the LED? Mm -hmm. I, I I think that will be a case for uh, enroll in the Paul Boss in Europe. Paul Boss is this. Uh, stand with two compartments and the connection and uh, the first the proximal uh, stand and balloon is larger than the distal so it's a kind of pot-like natural pot-like that would be a, an ideal case there is now about 30 patients in the in the trial so i think it would be a good case well, I think most of the second generation's DES can be taken yeah, up to more than five uh, mm -hmm. millimeter, mm -hmm. you know, with the appropriate so balloon sizing. So, so no real preference given mm -hmm. the size of the uh, uh, bifurcation opening we can make. So, and uh, for these cases, I expect a lot of debate about what strategy was better and the single mm -hmm. provisional stenting and two stent strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, some this is the most difficult to decide. Uh, uh, the LED ostium is relatively good. The mm -hmm. suck ostium is very tight. Is their option is the cool stenting and provisional T or something like that. But uh, uh, on the basis of our previous data, such like a, a 101 case, if you're going to side branch and the crossover to the main branch, usually the uh, main branch was jailed and the plug shifting. Mm -hmm. Is, a, is not good for uh, uh, distal and main. So unfortunately, we decided this case strategy before the starting the, this live case demonstration, we decided to the uh, uh, crush technique and we already performed the balloon <laughs> dilation. Okay, next one. So the whole panel I, I believe you, you've, you've done the balloon the, dilation, mm -hmm. the whole panel thought of provisional. In this case, is, I, I prefer the, the uh, culotte. The mm -hmm. reason why the jailing of the LED is low mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. reason why, first of all, the axis from the left main to LED is quite straight, not mm -hmm. the angular, is that quite easier. Second one is that the main left LED osteum area mm -hmm. is quite larger. So even if the, the possibility of the jailing of mm -hmm. the LED is lower, we can mm -hmm. easily wiring. So mm -hmm. the just the crossing 
the oculus stand and then balloon dilation and yes, then yes. look at the, the, the status of the mm -hmm. LED and mm -hmm. then uh, the, the, there is a significant yeah. narrowing at mm -hmm. the LED, mm -hmm. you can yes, do uh, yeah. the oculus or if the region is uh, quite well, right. just so, a little yes, yes, yes. So that would be the advantage and it's not too late to, to change because you can mm -hmm. always okay. convert okay. one stent yeah. into the circ into a culotte. Okay, I, I think Claude's uh, suggestion is a very nice suggestion. And Crush and the, you know, some most of three are most commonly used the two stand technique, Claude, tap, and Crush technique. Our center usually prefer the mm -hmm. uh, Crush techniques that we have a much, much experience for Crush technique. We sometimes do Claude and tap technique. We did the balloon, pre balloon dilation using 3.0 compliant balloon, and the next one and the second one, and the next one. This is we perform the free dilation for the LED, is the next one. Okay, this, okay, and we did a uh, free dilation. So uh, we're gonna do the balloon crush for such, uh, to treat the such region. And uh, on the basis of intravascular ultrasound, we decided to the 4.016 uh, resolute stand, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the synergy, synergy stand, stand the, to treat the region. Uh, this is a uh, 4.016. And then I'm gonna push up the uh, LED balloon. This is a uh, non-compliant balloon, 4.016, 15. 15, okay. Slightly, okay. So is this going to be a classic crush or a mini crush or a DK crush? Yes, yeah, this is a balloon crush and then we're gonna do a slightly pull back. Okay, got it, tester. Okay, a little bit more advanced. Okay, tester. Okay, spider view. Ja, center match go. Okay, ja, tester. Okay, slowly pull back. You know, some the come, come multi, yeah, yeah multi view is very important. There is some, okay, tester. Okay, good. Okay, are you corner that's it? Okay, got it. Center match go. So take the part okay, that would be a standard crush or you like okay, to have a go. DK crush? Go. Go. Uh, this is a balloon crush. We, we sometimes do DK crush. Yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Okay, deflate. This is 4.016 and synergy. Slightly pull back. Okay, one more. Go. Ten. Six, eight, ten. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Four point one. Fourteen. Fourteen. Four point two. Okay, deplete. And then we're gonna remove the uh, stand balloon and wire the from your suck match. Okay, suck. Okay, here. Ready. We're gonna inflate. Okay, go. Six, eight, ten. Ten. Nominal. 14, 14, 16, 16 18. 18. This is 4.0. 4. Okay, deep lead. Stand to them. Okay. Okay, Angel. Angel ready. Full shot. Yeah. Okay, good. And then the, we're going to put the uh, left main uh, LED uh, stand 4.0, another uh, 20. 20. Synergy stand. Synergy, another synergy stand. Is that there is some, you know, over time dynamic change of the crash, uh, crush technique at the initial time we did the uh, crash crush and the balloon crush and decay crush and there is some the change of times so nowadays we prefer the balloon crush mostly. Yeah, many people are now doing DK crush um, yes, given the results of uh, some of the randomized trial work. Yeah. It's more time consuming, you end up doing two pots, two crushes, but it does really recreate the geometry of the carina. Okay, test. Okay. Shallow area. This is good to see the Austin or main test. Okay, 조금 빼도 되겠다. 자, 한번 테스트. 자, 고. 가자. 11. 11 노미널. Okay. 12. 12. Save. Deflate. Okay. Okay, 
네, 방 찍어 볼게요. 잠깐만. 네. 엔젤 레디? 네. 풀샷. 네. 오케이, 굿. At this point, we're gonna do part. a part. Right. Uh, using 4.5 and uh, just 12. 10. Oh, 10? Yeah. Okay, got it. And you know, some, the wire recrossing is a part is uh, uh, definitely important to uh, prevent uh, uh, wrong direction wire passage or the, the facilitated wire recross much easily. Right, and the pot really helps with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, this is a uh, 4.5. Okay, got it. Okay, go. 4.5 is good. I think you could yes, have done a 5.0 oh, if you wanted. Okay, save. Deeply. Okay. Back a little. One more time. Yes. Go. 6, 8, 10. 10. 10. 12. 12. 14. 14. 14. Save. Deeply. 오스 한번 맞춰서 네. 하고 네. 나올게요. Okay. Here. Yeah. Okay, go. Six, eight. Ten, twelve. Ten, twelve. When I look at the fluoroscopic images, the actually the distal left main, there is okay. the more dense part. Is actually okay. it reflects okay. the, the length of the two layer of the sure. stand. Right. It okay, looks got it. like and the, then the maybe we cross the wire. three okay. more. Uh, five Dr. Bob, yes, yes, so, so we are uh, still in from the radio still part of the crest absolutely portion look without normal, the, the right? Not yeah. like yeah. much flag over there. And second so one is that the angiographic appearance is so, so far so good. The, uh, we have to take care of our concern here about the asthma of the cirque. Angiographically is good, but still narrow. So maybe uh, something happened in this patient in the long term mm -hmm. follow. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. most uh, possibility the, uh, is that the main maybe the narrowing of the ostium of the cell. So at this time, mm -hmm. we have to take care of the try to the more enlarge, try to mm -hmm. the ostium of the cell. Mm -hmm. so, so Gary and, and Estre, when you do a two stent technique, how important do you feel is it to IVIS not only the LED but also the circumflex at the end of the case? Uh, for particular this case is absolutely we need a you know a kissing balloon inflation to, uh, you know stepwise mm -hmm. circumflex or still high pressure inflation and uh, what I'm uh, what I'm concerned is uh, just uh, you know two stand. Uh, Actually, the LED was team is normal looking area, so and so I believe uh, actually the long term outcome uh, must be good, should be good. However, still, uh, uh, Greg, you, you got to grow out with uh, just the uh, provisional test, and is one of uh, the for that. Could you record I mean, so the Greg force copying image in that one? If yeah. at all possible, it should be done. Right. right. We got balloon mona. Especially in this case where I think the circ was. More it's not always possible from a technical standpoint. Right. But if all pop crush. This one I think it will be. Yeah, no. I mean DK crush actually is probably more conducive, the DK. especially yeah. Right. Especially we have an angle that's not ninety degrees. Because here the angle is more gentle mm -mm. in terms of right. getting the catheter into the circumflex. Essentially though. Yeah. This is one point five yeah, for side branch reassess. Yeah. The my the favorite wire was choice PT. Okay, ja go. Six, eight, ten. 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 Fourteen. Fourteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, deeply. Okay. So easily passed. Oh. Okay, go. Ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen. Sixteen, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, save. Deeply. Okay, we need uh, additional four point zero. And ship balloon. And ship balloon. Three point zero. Three point zero. Three what size of the? So are you yeah, using this is a what? This is a, yes. Uh, okay, the, this is a four point three point three point three point Okay. So we put the four point zero stock, four point zero stand the LED, and the, we uh, uh, recross and the, we pre dilation using one point five, and then we're gonna step up the. This is additional used the uh, initially used the the compliant balloon. Okay, and then we're gonna do finally 
uh, kissing balloon dilation using two non-compliant balloon 4.0 and 4.0. And then we're going to check up uh, what's happening in the uh, suck osteum and the T cell and main. We do a final part when you're done with that. This is a. Uh, 1번 주세요. 1번으로 2.5, 2.5. 2.5 주세요. 네. 이거 먹고. 오케이. Sometimes at that portion the wire was uh, seems like uh, some uh, the overwrapped at uh, the at the times so we sometimes we require the uh, pull back the main branch wire and then recross Okay, this is a two point five. Okay, got it. Yeah, good. Let's go in. Okay. What size of the balloon? Two point five. Yeah, two point five. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
오케이 세이브 디플립 한번더 빼서 네. 자 석보 체스티아스티엄 스틸 has a pinch it 14 16 16 16 long duration high pressure long duration 해 보자 잠깐만 오케이 가 you consider s 오케이 오케이 그레이 14 14 still a little pinch at the a s t e o s i r go to higher pressure Some years ago, we did bench okay. testing and showed the blitz tracks were being cleared yeah. by pressure 자, over 20 atmospheres. 자, LED go. Sequential kissing. Okay, go. 10, 12, 14. Okay, so, John, you have proposed to do to, uh, more than eight, at least a 20 atmosphere, especially for the uh, second break. Also, six, 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 two, six, 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 자 하나 둘셋 오케이 가자한 번만 더 Sorry, 한번 더 yeah. I'd like to ask the panel if if I were to okay, tell the panel six, do a high pressure inflation six, four, what does six, high pressure mean to you give me a number eight eight, eight, eight. what's a number one, high pressure two, what does it mean okay, it depends it. on the the p a s s e r side in ah, give me a general number high usually, pressure what's a number fourteen fourteen okay and twenty twenty Marie Claude non compliant twenty twenty 20. Okay. 20. I say no, high pressure to me, 20 to 24. Yeah. 22. 22. 22. <laughs> 20. <laughs> okay, so we range from 14 to 24. But not 12. 14 to me is low pressure. Oh. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, we're going to check. Okay, we're going to check. Enjoy. Okay. Without the check of the, the angiogram, the uh, stand size is well deployed. When we look at the, the angiogram the appearance, the, the overlap the stand was uh, the move to the, the downside. Okay. Okay. To the okay. right of the circle. It's a better sign. Okay, great. So okay, we're going to check the IVUS. Yeah. Uh, do you get stuck here? Okay, so, so, Craig, yeah, so give us, uh, if you can, quickly. It, I think it looks beautifully angiographically. You know the osteal cirque always always balloon. looks a little bit underdone, but you 4-0 yeah. balloon is probably going to be fine. But it'd be great to see an IVIS, particularly of the osteal cirque. Yeah. So, Greg, there are two studies that have recently come out that are probably worth noting. There's a randomized trial from China, 336 patients of IVIS versus angio guided left main stenting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The mortality at one year okay. was six percent well, in the angio group and two percent in the IVIS group. And okay, this is the i v u s for uh, suck to remain. Okay, and, we can see what happening the pure shear area and the s u c k osteum. Oh, yeah, very this good. Is, this how normal it is. Yeah. And Greg, there's also a registry from Samsung where 10-year mm -hmm. mortality advantage with i v u s guidance in the left main um, subgroup was an 80% reduction in mortality. At yeah, 10. and that, that's unrealistic, right. but, you know. But but I think the the um, the randomized trial from China I think is reasonable. Okay, great, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, you can see the wide wide open the soccer osteum, and then we're gonna the recheck the, from the LED, uh, LED to the yeah, main. Nice, that, to, nice to measure that osteum. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is uh, sufficient to we achieve the five six seven eight rule for distal left main bifurcation. Right. If we decide to stand, you to can stand see it's a little eccentric and. Yeah, um, yeah. But. I think it's probably going to measure 10 millimeters square. Oh, you know the um, well, the cut points of the Excel were larger than the s i right. periods. Right. Yeah, that is important to note that the we found larger cut points uh, close to in the left main itself, close to 9.8. Okay, oh, that's yes, yeah, it was like 9.7 or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, G Gary, one of the questions regarding the new Polaris system for the uh, yep. Boston. Is any comment regarding that so compared with the uh, old okay, system? Okay, wonderful. Well, this I mean, it's a higher H. frequency transducer, and the software is better. Um, you know, it's like, okay, uh, you try it, you make sure you like it, and then you get rid of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. This is uh, coming to suck osteum. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah. That, that looks perfect. Yeah, it's a wide Well, awesome. that's what you would expect. That's the straight yeah, step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so looking at this Left configuration, I think uh, we don't need uh, additional r e f a t It's widely open. Yeah, I would just do measurements, but... I, th I think the left main looks yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's fully covered. The left main osteum. Yeah, yes, couple millimeters into the aorta. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. okay. We're gonna we're gonna show show us the final shot. Okay, and you're ready. 
So just measure the left main osteum for us. Okay. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna show us the our area coral view. Okay. Okay, Angel, ready? Shoot. Okay, oh, I think this case is, uh, you know, some, some of interesting point of debatable portion, which strategy is good for this patient 101. And, uh, you know, the, I think uh, the, I'm going to very happy to show our routine practice element, uh, yeah. the PCI. We definitely 100% based on the intravascular ultrasound. We decide the stand length, stand size, uh, and the frequently decide our stand st strategy. I think our, this case is typical a representative case, Asam Medical Center, left main PCI. Any comment Let's, from panel or audience? A terrific yeah. case. It, it just yeah. shows it how many different good. ways there are to, to do this. This whole yeah, panel yeah. would have done a single stent, um, um, but you can't argue with the kind of results you get here. And uh, it'd be wonderful, you know, this is the one trial. We don't have a randomized trial yet for these minor mm -hmm. lesions uh, mm -hmm. in Medina 101, 110, 101. So, but great result, beautiful use of IVIS. Yeah. And I congratulate you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I'm Do Yung Gang from Asa Medical Center. Uh, it's my great honor to present a live case in front of the history of the PCI. I will introduce our team. It's Charyan Lee, Dr. Charyan Lee, and my third year, second year fellow, Dr. Park, Sang -ho Park. Yes. I prepared an inspiring case for you, and Dr. Lee will introduce the case. This patient is a 66-year-old uh, male. Uh, he uh, complained of uh, effort angina uh, uh, one month ago. And he had uh, uh, cardiovascular uh, risk, uh, hypertension, uh, di diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. Left coronary angiogram showed the focal significant stenosis at distal left main and proximal uh, LAD osteum. Next. Uh, he has a uh, uh, triple A, and, but uh, size is uh, four, uh, 40, maybe observation, and next. Uh, echo is a uh, uh, normal every systolic function, and next. Uh, right coronary is normal, next. We check the uh, PEPAR and hyperemic uh, proximal LAD, we check the uh, 0 0.75, and next. Oh, next. Yeah. And uh, we will show the coronary angiogram. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, RAO caudal view, and yes. we uh, can find the uh, focal uh, stenosis, uh, proximal LADOs, and rupture or energy mark change of distal left main. Yes. yes. The patient felt an atypical chest pain. He doesn't remember when it was, but about one month ago, he felt a strange symptom of the chest. Maybe some rupture occurred Next. and survived. Next. And he visited the E40 angina after the symptom. And we checked the angiogram. And the angiogram shows a rupture of the distal left main. And other circumflex and LAD looks nearly normal. So we checked FFR because we always check FFR for this kind of lesion. And the FFR was 0.75. And major step was at the prox LAD to distal left main. And the patient now has very uh, stable symptom and FFR is 0.75 and some ischemic symptom. So we decided to treat the distal left main rupture lesion. Do you have any comment or opinion? So I'll ask uh, Gary. So Gary, what is IVIS going to show? Is it going to show a uh, ruptured ulcerated plaque, or is it going to show a big calcific nodule, or what do you think? That, it's an unusual angiogram. What yeah, do you think this will show? I, I, my first guess was be to show a ruptured plaque in the distal left main. I think that's the most likely finding. Yes. And again, I think you'll see that disease extends into the proximal or osteoproximal LAD for about 10 millimeters, yeah. and the rest of the vessel right. will be pretty normal again you know yeah, again if you look at the caliber of the pro osteoproximal LED uh, you can see it's all generally narrowed 
So I would kind of, in my mind's eye, extend the roof of the LED to the right. Uh, the roof of the left main to the LED, and you can see where that plaque probably used to be. Well, I think there's a significant mismatch in the size of the LED and left main. I think that will be the biggest challenge in this case here. Right. Right. Yes. Right. So, uh, point it, of view it's a quantification too. So. Discrepancy from the, the LED and to the left main, so we have to use it. The IOS is confirmed that the real size of the LED and the left main. Yes, thanks so for your opinion. Can I we, ask the yeah. cardiologist? Yeah. Oh yes. What what risk would you quote this patient for PCI? Yes, that's what I wanted to ask the panel. <laughs> I have some patient like this morphology of the uh, angiography, and some this patient has significantly low FFR, 0.75. So I think the patient has a stable symptom but FFR is significantly lower, so I decide to treat the patient. But some patient with this anatomy, FFR is normal, like 0 0.82, 0 0.83, and in that case, to treat or not, is really a consideration for me, like a young doctor. So I really wanted to ask you, uh, the, uh, the panels, how would you treat this patient if FFR is negative, or how would you treat or although FFR is positive in this patient. The patient is stable now. So in our center, yeah. we would certainly offer this patient at least a discussion of coronary bypass grafting. He's 66, grafting. he's got very yeah. complex looking left main with the discrepancy yes. into the proximal LED. It's yes. functionally significant. Yes. We know that the one benefit we can offer patients, that the only intervention that makes a difference to life expectancy is a patent mammary on the LED. Yeah. This is a young man at 66 with diabetes. Yes. So I think as opposed to the first case here, I would be much more, we would definitely discuss this more carefully about whether this patient should, should be offered bypass grafting. So yeah. David, in this case, the will, will you do the... Actually, Dr. Tagas, the uh, comment is uh, correct. Okay. The, okay. But the real situation is uh, right. something different for me. So in, when I, this is uh, my patient, I offer uh, two options. You, you have uh, two options. One is uh, the surgery, one is the uh, stent. And then stent, the patient uh, decides to the, uh, take a surgery. Okay, go surgery. And the, the patient select, uh, oh, even though uh, I like uh, the, uh, the, the stand surgery is better, but yeah, I prefer the stand and then we it will the stand. Yeah. So if we explain to a patient like this that the risk of a bypass operation would be less than 1% and would give him a patent mammary of over 90% for the next 20 years, right. this is a very important option in a young right. patient. Okay, Dr. Gong. Yes. All right. Uh, would you show us I wish and uh, yes. uh, all right. Yes. Another another you know uh, discussion point is yes. just a 0.75 yes. positive yes. FFR. You're gonna treat yes. them, right? How okay. to treat as the most important and so you're gonna show the I wish force and yes, then okay. so, I wired okay, to, we will discuss yeah. how uh, how to do later, right? Yes, I wired the LED and then check the I was next. So I would, I'd like to make a prediction before you show the IVIS, and that's that there's not going to be such a disparity. I think the proximal LED is going to be at least three and a half millimeters. Or more. Uh, with diffu more. It might more. be, well, I said yes. at least, so probably four, maybe four and a half, and there's going to be diffuse proximal disease. So to me, this is a chip shot PCI. That's what I'm expecting the IVIS will show us. Yeah. So this is the LED, you're correct? So yes. we, Craig, we're already at four One, millimeters. One, two, three, four, four five. almost five millimeters. Yes. So, so and, and here's the, now we're getting to the diffuse disease in the LED. Correct. So one, two, one, two, three, four, almost six millimeters. Yes. Very tight. And now we're in the, the left main. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And here's the plaque rupture. Right. And the left main's seven millimeters. So to me, this, yes. this is a very simple single stent case. Yeah. I, I wire the intermediate, I wire the circ, <laughs> wire the LED, one stent crossover. So, so Greg, if, if this were a live demonstration course in Japan, you know what they would do? What? They would do DCA yes. of the distal left main followed by a drug coated balloon. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I mean, this is perfect case for attack to me in Japan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so since there are no Japanese on the panel, I'll pretend I'm Japanese and say, why not do DCA followed by a drug coated balloon? Yeah. Yeah. I think, one, we have no data. Two, um, 
to remove yeah. enough plaque. There's a huge amount of plaque here. Okay. Now, yes, in Japan, they will spend three hours and, and keep doing iterative DCA with IVIS. But I, I think a, a stent here, given the size of the vessels, you're going to have a restenosis yeah. rate of probably 2% or less. Yeah. Right. So, so just to um, summarize, just, Greg. And it's much, much easier. Yeah. So, the, so the, the, the discrepancy between the left main and proximal LED is actually modest. There is diffuse disease from the distal left main into the proximal LED. There's a plaque rupture in the distal left main, mm. and the size is somewhere in the five millimeter range. Right. Yes. I think this is a very good case to show that the strength of the, the uh, IBIS in this case. So what I mean, yeah. without the, the use of the IBIS, my expectation is the proximal LED size is 3.5. But the, we, after use of the, the IBS, why not? The uh, selection of the 4 o stand is uh, without yeah. uh, any fear of the population. And you, and you see the bulge, even on the angiogram, see that bulge in yeah, the yeah. prox LED before the bifurcation of the large diagonal? That tells you that the prox LED is just huge. Okay, so IBS shows the diffuse disease on the left main to proximal LED. And Approximately to the diagonal branch, the vessel size was very big, 5.5. And this type two diagonal branch, the vessel size was small, less yeah. than over, over 3.0. So I decided to, to the stand from left main to approximately approximately LAD with 4.0 yeah. or more size. So, so Greg, there's one other point. Yes. Yeah. Um, despite what it looks like angiographically, that yes. carina, the flow divider, is still disease free. Right. Yeah. I mean, it looks like there's disease in the inferior aspect of the LED, but it's not. Right. Can you show it, it the time? May I ask the operators uh, yes. why they don't uh, wire the circumflex rather than that intermediate? Okay, Dr. Kong? Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, very interesting. We have to move to the another uh, case. Yeah, yes. Uh, we have to uh, the, uh, hurry up the, the, the other okay, cases. Okay, I the procedure. Keep I going with your cases. I, I think it's always prudent. I'd, I'd wire the circ too. I think the likelihood of acute closure of the circ is low, but I'd still have a wire in it. No more. Terms of Gary suggests the TCA for like this region. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, anyway, there's some uh, palatable plaque concern. So I don't, I don't touch for uh, maybe fibro fatties mainly. Uh, we're gonna do that, but in the uh, in the. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I was not being totally serious. Right. Right. Okay, Dr. Han. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi, so yes, I have, uh, I have another, <laughs> another tough case. 81 year old male admitted for the chest pain. He received the p previous PCI, uh, multiple previous PCI, Cypress Gen uh, 2006, and another Cypress Gen LAD 2004, 2005, 2006. Recently, uh, the Last 10 years, he, he didn't use any kind of uh, nitroglycerin or he didn't feel any chest pain, but recently he complained of chest pain uh, visiting my outpatient clinic. Next, please. Risk factors are hypertension, hyperlipidemia, smoker, presented as a cerebral angina, 81 year old male. The echocardiography showed a kinase of mid posterior wall. Ejection fraction is normal. Syntax score is 20. We already measured the LED FFR. LED FFR is 0.75. RC FFR is 0.84. Could you show us the initial angiogram? Okay, this is a patient angiogram. Okay, you can see the LED stand. LED stand it looks uh, patent. The LED FFR is 0.75. But uh, left main and prox LED, very tight stenosis. Yeah. Next, please. This is spider view, a circ. So very tight to classify the left to this left main bifurcation disease. So I'm sorry, when was the stent placed in the LED? 2006. Okay. So almost 10 years ago. That was More a than cipher. 10 years. Yeah, cipher. cipher. Yeah, cipher. Yeah, cipher. What about so, the information of the right coronary artery? Actually, uh, in this vessel, right. size of the circ is uh, not so big. So please I, show us uh, the right coronary angiogram. Could you show? Can I you? See it. I see it. Um, we did, we previously we evaluated. We we did uh, uh, we evaluated RCA previously. So we measured the FFR. RCA FFR is a 0.84. There is some diffuse uh, neo-intima hyperplasia. 
but the FFR is 0.84. So we don't like to touch, R we don't need to touch RCA. Okay. We just focus on the left main bifurcation. So do you have a spider view? Could you show spider view? Okay, run please, okay. okay. Yeah, not easy. Mm. Do you have a comment? And did, did you FFR the circumflex? No, <laughs> impossible. Wire insertion is yes. Really? Wire insertion itself is uh, not easy. I, I would bet that the stent struts may be involving the circumflex ostium, Greg. No, 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 no. no, no, the stents, no it's stent. just the LED. I don't, yeah. There's not a stent across the left main, right? No. I'm yeah. supposed to. Yeah, be. I would FFR the circ myself okay. if you can. I, but you can see the RCA. RCA is. Uh, Looks fine. Have, uh, yes, dominant RCA. I see itself is uh, looks fine and uh, yeah. distributed the whole maybe largely distributed. So when you yeah. fix the uh, left coronary artery, the significance of the uh, circ is uh, lesser because yeah, of the right, territory right. of the mm. the myocardium supplied by right coronary yeah. artery is uh, so, yeah. so huge one. Plus yeah. it's yeah, a that's why I, I suspect for that reason exactly what you said that if you did FFR the circ it would be negative even though it's obviously severely diffusely diseased I don't know that though because it goes all the way up to the osteum there's oh. diffuse disease yeah, yeah frankly speaking what would you do the circumflex is in the anti FFR so you want to do you don't touch the circumflex well, I mean I I would I would personally FFR the circ Right. And, and if it was positive, then I'm going to do a two stent technique and try to treat it. All right, absolutely, I yes. agree with that. However, in part, look at this, it's very diffuse disease. Uh, even uh, angiographically, very diffuse disease. Uh, maybe I think it's a, a, you know, <laughs> a positive FFR, even negative FFR, we have to fix up in terms of a technical point of view. We have to cross uh, crossovers from the proximal to the main and maybe there is some diffuse disease circumflex it should be compromised and so uh, for yeah for particular this technical point of view uh, whatever you know positive negative ffr for the circumflex source team and so we didn't do the ffr for circumflex and just positive already we're going to do the two stem for that right well, so I'll tell you why I yes. would do the FFI. It, yes, so you can notice there's diffuse disease in the circ up until like this marginal branch. Mm -hmm. So if the FFR is positive, then I'm going to do a two stent technique, including a long stent up until that point. If the FFR is negative, so it's just not such an important territory, then I may do a crossover. I may end up ballooning the osteocirc to keep it open, but I would worry less about it. But that's uh, so yes, I, I would like to the, judge the uh, ostium yeah. of the. Uh, Ostium of the circumflex by Ivus. I yeah, mean, I don't, I don't trust that. I mean, I can see suddenly uh, being occluded uh, is easy, is uh, small, and it's nevertheless a quite large territory, despite the fact the, the right is dominant. Yes, I fully, uh, uh, yes, I fully so agree calcified. with uh, your, your opinion. Yeah. So we have to think differently. Prognostic, prognosis and patient symptom. Yes, if FF, uh, circumflex FFR is uh, negative, yeah, prognostically, circumflex is small, so prognostically not important, but during the procedure, the circumflex is not, uh, considering the patient symptom, procedural risk, uh, circum is not so small and very classified. So the, initially, I agree with the SJ, the initially we need, a, definitely we need a two-stand technique, and IVOS evaluation is very important. So. Initially, we evaluate LAD first. Yes. You can see the LAD IVUS. Yeah, Ron, please. Show us the IVUS, please. Thank okay. you. Please skip the, just above, focus on the left main. Okay, here we just stented the area. Ron, please, from here. This is the stem proximal portion. Stent a little bit underexpanded compared to vessel size. Here is a proximal AD, very high classification, more than uh, 12, uh, 180. Vessel size is uh, 4 O. Not so significant stenosis, but plug burden is more than 50%. Here is the LAD ostium. Here is the left main. Okay, and catheter. Could you show us the, the circumflex? Yes, that, no. Next, please. Angel, next, please. Next. Next. So, yes, previous, you can see the IVUS catheter cannot 
passing sure. through the distal sulk. So we just uh, see the proximal sulk only. Yes. Long, please. Proximal sulk, the better side. Can we see it, please? Full screen, yeah. full, full screen, Ivis, please. Thank yeah. you. Tashi, Lon, please. Here is the sock. Flux sock. We cannot pass it through the distal sock. Vessel size 3 Heavy calcification. Here is the sock. Jim, stop, please. I mean, the ostium so, circumflex okay. like is pretty small. Yeah. Yeah, it's small. Yeah, the ostium yeah. is heavily calcified and tight. What about a little more distal to that? I, I cannot pass it through the cassette oh, to know, the yeah, distal. Yeah, yeah. So but, but, but just next, enough. I mean, just a little yeah. bit distally will tell us distal, the vessel distal, size. Distal, yeah. please. Vessel size is 3 no, no, Distal, no, no. please. No, previous. Distal, distal, distal. Yeah, this side. Yeah. Okay, I will show you next to angiogram. What, what, what I've done is, what I've done is uh, balloon dilatation using the 2.5. Next, please. Next. This is 2.5. Next, 2.5. High pressure balloon up to 28. No, there is still indentation. Next, please. This is 275. Next, next. Several times because of weak guiding catheter bag off, I used the, the guide jiller. So after high pressure, several high pressure up to using the 2.75 up to 20A, and I can pass Ivo's catheter to the distal cell complex. So I can see the cell complex for imaging. Very good. Can, yes, can you see on the screen? Okay, this is the distal cell. Normal looking area, vessel size is 3 all. Yes, there is so some dissection. Three yeah. vessel, so that, that really is helpful. Long, 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 please. And here is um, the more proximal. Very tight stenosis here. And some dissection due to yeah. hypersharp ballooning. Did you, uh, you discussed already what is the pressure of high pressure? Very good. I Very already, good I already, <laughs> I already. Yeah, that was high pressure. 28. We agree. We, yeah. like, we like that. That was 28. You needed that. Yeah. So Keep here is left to main. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So what you've done next is uh, not easy to passing the stand like this because calcification, tortuosity, how to deal with uh, this situation. Next, you can see the LAD balloon and balloon inflation. This is the balloon anchoring technique. Fortunately, nice. there, is a, there is a stand in the LAD, so I can inflate the balloon. So I can insert the, so definitely insert the stand to the circumflex. And I inflate. Next, please. This is a 27528 two, stand. And then. Why, why 275? I think the LED is much larger than that. No, no. The oh, circumflex, the circumflex is, 275. Yes. Thank, okay, yes. thank you, thank you. Yeah, I yes. insert the stand circumflex first. Yeah, 275, perfect. Yeah, 275 first. Perfect. And then uh, using the anchoring, I insert the balloon to the LED stand. And then. I insert 275 high pressure balloon again, like this. I inflate the high pressure 20 up to 28 to open further circumflex ostium stand. If there is some sh uh, shrinkage, the rewiring is very difficult. So I open again. Next. Next, again. This is balloon crush. Crush the circumflex ostium by balloon to 3.75 high pressure balloon. Yes, you can see the, yeah. Nice. And then, yes. Uh, the ostium I'm, of the circumflex is so heavily calcified that it's going to be yes. very difficult to get a good uh, MSA. Yes, yeah, right. 3.75. So, yes. excellent job. You have uh, the six minutes left. Please keep going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. We have a 10 minutes lecture up to you. Yeah. So before LAD 
is then I need the one more volume inflation for so complex osteum. Okay, right. Big balloon, so high pressure, so complex osteum, still there are large of, uh, you know, calcification, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So I like to insert, I like to open again so complex before LED stenting. This is a kind of decay crush. LED inflation, please. LED inflation, yeah. please. Six. Anchoring depletion. Stock, ah, uh, stock, inflation. This is 1.5. Yes. 18. 18. 18. 18. Depletion. 18. 18. Depletion. 18. Depletion. You want the 275 volume, please. High pressure volume. Pre-lesion modification is very important, particularly for, treated, for uh, treating the heavily calcified lesion. If, we are once, if once you implant the stain, further dilatation is almost impossible without the uh, aggressive diverting device. So talking about the lesion prepared for the second frax osteos, cutting balloon scoring frax is at the better than the, just the balloonings. Is because uh, some of the European studies showing that uh, cutting, scoring frax plus stenting is better you than want. just uh, you know, the uh, regular balloon. But the issue is that the crossability of that cutting balloon and scoring balloon for this very tight, high angulated lesion. Yeah, again, I think, uh, I think we'd all get nervous about atherectomy given the angle. Uh, could have been done over a stiffer wire to straighten out that angle. I think in the future, you know, this will be a nice case for shockwaves to uh, debulk and uh, improve the compliance of these types of lesions. So one concern is uh, cutting balloon, uh, a balloon is uh, compliant or semi-compliant balloon. So the, I think the not enough power to break the calcium. So inflate 20, 20 24, 28. 28. Yes, you can see the whale, whale, uh, the expanded stand. Good. Can you see? Good. Yeah, that okay. looks looks definitely well expanded. Yeah. And I like to insert more. 10, 10, 12, 12, 14, 14, deflation. Because we already knew the third complex the vessel size. The vessel size is a little bit a little, uh, about the three O, so I can apply the. Yeah, I two think seven five. Approximately, it's it's definitely Two. a three O. Deflation. For sure. One more. Twenty eight. Yes. Twenty eight. Deflation. Perforation. Okay. Yeah. Many balloon perforated. Perforated. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, one of the questions regarding, uh, you know, DS for more than 10 years, uh, neoarthroscopy should be, uh, you know, a lot. So if you're using ten. OCT to see it, you might see some uh, lipid laden uh, materials inside. 10, 12, so 30, 14, uh, to, should 14, we leave this uh, 16, DS for 10 18, years, 18, uh, cipher? 20, 20. Uh, we just treat that uh, level generated plasma, or maybe we need to treat uh, further down for the cipher uh, instant portion. Well, 20, I mean, please. we didn't get a good look at the lumen within the cipher stent. I would assume that whatever new intima there is somewhat lipidic and has some elements of neoatherosclerosis. But if after treating the left main, FFR is acceptable, or if we look at the IVIS and see that the lumen area within the cipher stent is acceptable, I would leave it alone. Yeah. 
So complex wire is not necessary. I mean, so I rem no. I'm I, removing it. I think that it. cipher stent looked pretty good for 13 yeah. years. We didn't see much. I mean, we didn't see it very well. well. They, they showed, I think they showed it okay. There okay. wasn't that much neo-intima. I think well, it was a little know, agreed, under... Agreed. But they skipped. I mean, I just like to look at it. Yeah. They sort of yeah, skipped sure. through pretty quickly. So, sorry to interrupt. The, uh, Dr. Han, please continue yeah. to yeah. do your procedure. We have to move Test to it. The, it. the next one. The next one is uh, the... Uh, Keynote lecture, current status of the left main PCI. Dr. Lee. Okay. That was a nice case. Maybe we can yeah. come back and see the final if possible. Thank you. Well, um, before starting, I think I have to um, say that it's really an honorable for me to make a keynote lecture of left main PCI in front of the left main PCI masters. Thank you for that. So um, Carl Sagan, a famous astronomer in the US and just working in the field of cardiology, I think I really um, think he's right. You, you have to know the past to understand this present in all aspects of the medicine. So um, uh, Bernard Meyer, uh, one of the colleagues of the uh, Dr. Andrea, uh, Andrea uh, the first uh, the pioneer of coronary angioplasty, uh, he reported the first angioplasty of left main um, uh, coronary disease in uh, European Heart Journal last year, and uh, he uh, mentioned that the left le uh, left main lesion uh, resisted maximum balloon uh, pressure about five bar at that time and um, the procedure was unsuccess unsuccessful. So that was performed in about 1977, and one month later, the first successful angioplasty for left main was uh, performed. And um, I was always suspicious that, um, uh, did Andreas know what he was doing? Because he did a balloon angioplasty in a significant left main which a uh, junior like me could never understand, you know. So um, this patient um, suddenly died one year after the procedure, so I don't know what happened, but uh, that was the circumstance. So um, the PTCA, the balloon angioplasty, had lots of limitation. And because we knew that the left main lesion is a significant, a high-risk lesion, and there have been uh, 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 studies that showing superiority of uh, bypass surgery over medical therapy, the cabbage was a singular option for left main coronary disease for over 30 or 40 years. So at that time, the situation was that left main balloon angioplasty or PCI with bare metal stent was only permitted to uh, patients who were inoperable or high risk, high operative risk. So. Uh, this situation was quite similar with the Tover situation, but the big difference is that Tover had expanded its indication in a short period of time, but left main PCI took a long, long time. Uh, early pioneers looked for the possibility of uh, left main PCI as a comparator uh, cabbage uh, to those who also had a, a acceptable risk of operation and the low to intermediate PCI risk in favor of anatomy. So these patients were deemed to have clinical equipos of either PCI or surgery at that time. So uh, with the effort of many clinicians, physicians, trialists, and operators, we have achieved lots of evidence in this field, and um, we, have, we got lots of uh, landmark um, trials, and. Uh, good um, real-world uh, evidences supporting our practice right now. And we also have a novel Excel uh, in the era of second-generation DES. The main compare was the initiative of these uh, trials and uh, studies. Five-year outcome was uh, quite good. Uh, uh, of course, the uh, revascularization rate was higher in the DES group. The left main subset in the landmark uh, syntax score, the five year of the two, five year outcome of the two uh, modalities were similar. Of course, we know that there was a differential outcome according, the, uh, according to the complexity of the uh, uh, coronary uh, anatomy. The pre um, 
trial, five-year result, were also similar. And the patient liver meta-analysis using the syntax and be, uh, best trial and the pre-combat trial show that uh, a similar result in left main subset and even a, a superior uh, uh, outcome uh, in those who had a really favorable, a more favorable uh, uh, coronary artery, including left main alone or left main one vessel disease. So um, this message is that we, c we do not have to uh, take risk of early operative uh, operation in these uh, simple, uh, relatively simple lesion uh, patients. Uh, the Excel trial, um, we have the four-year outcome right now, uh, although we have, a, uh, we have seen the trend of a crossovering with the PCI subject, still there is no difference in four-year. And the primary outcome of novel, disease, uh, novel um, trial which included uh, uh, the endpoint of repeat revascularization shows superiority of uh, cabbage over PCI. So there have been about th uh, more than 30 uh, meta-analysis done after the Nobel and Excel uh, published in the peer review the journal. And uh, they all looked at a different aspect of these uh, two uh, uh, modalities, but overall, the result was similar. The revascularization rate was, was higher in the P, uh, PCI group, but uh, all other endpoints were similar. So, um, for if you think about the revascularization strategy for let main uh, coronary artery disease, we have good part for PCI. So, um, in reality, patients who are inoperable or or ha have a high risk operative risk, and the septic risk of PCI is relatively small in number. Um, the patients who were included in the clinical trials, um, I, I don't want to say that it's majority, but I can say that um, there are a substantial number of patients that can still be included in this category. Uh, it makes sense because the left main coronary disease is an inflow tract disease, so uh, it induces a large ischemic area burden and patients intuitively speak, uh, thinking that patients can have a severe symptom and uh, present earlier uh, in terms of the complexity of non-left main lesions. So what's the reality? Uh, the PCI proportion have rapidly increased over time, not only thanks to not only to the uh, development and innovation of uh, drug lutein stents, but also the concept of PCI, the op PCI optimization technically, medically, and the uh, uh, incorporation of FFR, uh, also the intra-procedure, post-procedure medical therapy uh, for the secondary prevention, all these uh, efforts and developments contributed to this phenomenon. I don't think that it's different in the U.S. situation because uh, the U.S. situation has a different clinical pathway managing the patients uh, compared with the Asia Pacific, but uh, the data shows that the left main PCI number is increasing over time. What about cabbage? Did cabbage uh, stay still during the uh, evol uh, evolution of PCI? No. Um, uh, according to our experience and evidence, the cabbage also improved over time. Technically and intra-procedural um, management, post-operative care, the systems also Im improved, and also the medical therapy, the guideline directed medical therapy after cabbage has also improved. So uh, if you look at this data uh, published recently, uh, the Syntex and Excel had a five to seven year gap. And uh, within the cabbage group enrolled in those two, uh, uh, two trials, the Excel uh, cabbage patients had uh, a better outcome compared to the propensity score matched syntax cabbage uh, group. This uh, trend was uh, equally found in our uh, IRIS main registry with uh, looking at the cabbage group that the risk adjusted trends for hazard ratios were uh, getting better over time, especially for repeat revascularizations and uh, the outcomes at pace. So for summary, uh, evidence-based changes for the treatment effect of PCI and cabbage uh, really got better over time, rapidly for PCI and steadily for cabbage. But of note, I did not uh, place this PCI in the same section of cabbage. 
So we have to appreciate the fundamental difference in the method methodology of PCI and cabbage. So PCI has early uh, advantage of risk, and uh, while uh, whereas the cabbage has early uh, operative risk. But if you think about the long term results, the cabbage will have uh, continuous ben benefit because it can uh, give us more uh, uh, more proportion of complete revascularization and also the protection against the events arising from the proximal significant or either non-significant lesions. So I think uh, the, uh, the physicians in this room all agree that PCI will never rival uh, Lima to LAD in terms of the LAD disease and left main disease. So this is why we have differential outcome according to the anatomical complexity and also a durability concern. We, ha we may have, uh, 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 there are uh, uh, studies, uh, study outcomes evolving that um, are showing that uh, the outcome of cabbage will be more better in long-term outcome. So um, uh, these patients, so uh, if you consider these patients, so if, you, if the patient has uh, acceptable operative risk and uh, PCI risk is high, or if the patient has unfavorable anatomy, or, or a patient who need long-term prevention of additional uh, myocardial damage, including uh, LV dysfunction, the cabbage is the answer. But still, PCI has its role because we are treating the traditionally under-treated patients these, these days. We have more uh, understandings, the hemodynamics, and we have uh, hemodynamic supports that uh, we can have a chance to manage these patients. So I would have to say that uh, a small proportion of patients but uh, who have a high operative risk and high PCI risk, they, they will have a chance to be treated with PCI. So current state is the left main PCI, PCI important position. But cabbage is cabbage, we have to appreciate it. So decision making for left main disease will be uh, the key, uh, we have to take, uh, consider the bad, good part and bad part of uh, both of the procedures uh, if we uh, want, uh, want to decide the, uh, the treatment uh, strategy. So the last thing I would like to emphasize that if we opt to do PCI, we have to do it right. So that's the key. Uh, this patient had a, a LAD CTO, a significant left main bifurcation uh, uh, disease. The opera operator did an NGO guided kissing stent in an elective situation. And this was the final. The patients had a, uh, had, had a guideline directed medical therapy, but eight months later, he experienced chest pain, heart failure. And after stabilization, we took an NGO. We, we had to explain the phenomenon. We did the FFR. The LAD FFR was 0.36, circum 0.67. So we did the imaging. There was a thrombus extending from the LAD, also from circum. To, to the left main bifurcation, there was under expansion, and the stent was marrow position. So uh, this is the key. We, if we opt to do the left main PCI, we have to do it right. So I think this is what the left main PCI live demonstration of TCTAP is all about. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Dr. Lee. Uh, I want to move to the back to the uh, castle without the discussion about this topic for the final result. Okay, Dr. Gang, please show us your final result. Yes, uh, the procedure was simple and clear. I implanted 4.223 giant stent from left main to prox LAD. Implanted. And after IVC evaluation, I further dilated with 4.5 NC balloon up to high pressure 24 at left main. And then I checked the final IVUS. Final IVUS shows the great result. It's underexpanded, kind of. Yeah, it's really yes. underexpanded, we're saying. It's a good yes. lumen, but it still looks underexpanded. And yes. you've got a lot of malopose struts at the proximal edge, which makes you worry about if you ever have to rewire it getting right. behind the stent. Yes. And you did lose the intermediate. Yeah, the intermediate. Yeah. So, so it might, I don't know if you're completely done. Yes. And after the stenting and high pressure, 
the patient felt some, they showed some notice for phenomenon. And the patient did not show pain or EK change, but flow was slow. And after the high pressure balloon, I finished the procedure. Excellent job. You have to concern about the, the flow compromise in the intermediate yes. branch after you have to take care of that. Okay? Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for the, your great job. We will move to the other the cath lab. Yes. Tan. Hi again. Yeah, I did uh, many jobs. Previous, yes. After uh, previous one. Yeah, previous one. Yeah, after the pre previous one. Previous one. Previous. Previous. Okay. After previous. I, I stand. Next, please. Yes, this is a high pressure balloon for the LAD side. After stand, uh, I selected the LAD, LAD to left main stand is 4.020. 20 millimeter stand because the LED vessel size is 40, left main is 4.6, so sure. maximum size is 40. I selected it, and then before circumflex rewire, the most important step is LED stand optimization. So based on the LED size, so I selected the 40 high pressure balloon. Next, please. Sequentially, I applied a high pressure, and next, please. This is a high pressure 4 o up to 28 because the left main is 4.6 vessel size. Next, next. Then, this is very important to, uh, not to damage the left main ostium. The using the balloon, balloon pull out, guiding catheter inside is a useful way to avoid the left main stenting damaging. Next, please. The dewire. Circumplex, next. Fortunately, successful dewire. Next, please. The using the anchor, this is a 1.5 circumplex balloon. And next. And next, please. This is a 2.75. Next. For the full high pressure balloon, using 2.75. Yes, vessel size is 3 all. But regarding the, uh, to avoid the complication because very calcified lesion, the vessel size inflation sometimes make uh, vessel damage. So I like to use the smaller size than very high pressure. This is my the preferred way. 2.75, high pressure up to 28. Next, please. Next. Next. And next. Left main, sequential high pressure. Next. This is the final kissing. Next. Next. The left main is very big. I pulled a little bit more and inflated the 12 12. Next. This is uh, almost the final. So just before the IVOS evaluation. Okay, it's a great job. Uh, you will go, go to the, the IVOS examination goal. And, yeah. uh, the beyond the time schedule, or we have okay. to the, the session for the, the ceremony for the master of the master. If, That's a if beautiful, beautiful result, though. Yeah. Very, very nice work. Very.